Booster. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. We're go flying. Guidance. Guidance, go. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. I feel the need. The need for speed. You've got to ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Join us or die. And welcome to Mark Rupia Outdoors, the podcast. So glad to have you guys back again. And uh, we're here for another edition, and we're kind of changing things up, mixing things around. Got some new things going on with uh, with our with our whole platform, our social media, our websites, and everything. And we'll talk to you more about that. Uh, but uh, how are you doing this morning, Ryer? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. That's good. Well, why don't you uh, why, why don't you lead us in with how people can find us to start this bad boy? Well, Mark, this time we've actually got some different information for people. So uh, we are switching uh, some of our social media channels to um, the name of our new web series, which if you're a true Mark Groupie Outdoors, Groupie Groupie, you should have seen already because we released episode one last... Friday? When, yep. Yep, last Friday. Um, and so the name of that new web series is The Community Show. And uh, you can find us under that name on all the regular channels, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're not on Snapchat. We haven't set Mark up with that Tinder that we were talking about last time, but uh, maybe here in the near future, if we get bored, we might do that. Uh, you can also find us on Hunter vids. That's a new place actually. Yeah. We're excited about that going on. So, uh, we're partnering with those guys, uh, to bring you our, uh, webisodes and, uh, you can as always find this podcast on iTunes under the Mark Ruby outdoors podcast. Uh, you can find it on our Mark Ruby outdoors website, uh, Mark Ruby outdoors.com slash podcast and if you're curious about uh, our new project the community show you can check that out on its own website which is uh, the community show dot tv because dot tv makes it sound cool and official and dot com was already taken <sighs> Well, it would have been so much cooler if you just would have left it at that, Mark. Now people think that, you <laughs> that know... That we're desperate. That we're desperate, which we're not. We're, we're just trying to sound cool. We want to be part of the cool kids club, you know? Dot idiot was our next choice. And then after that, dot moron. Well, we... Um, uh, speaking of our first episode, uh, our first episode was with Scott Feist of... Uh, uh, feisty, feisty fisher outdoors, and uh, and we had feisty uh, fish guide service. Feisty fish guide service. Sorry about that. I keep messing that up. And uh, we had a good snow goose hunt. And looking at our weather right now, I kind of wish we were uh, duck hunting here in California right now. It seems like our winter weather has moved to March, but uh, um. Waterfowl hunting uh, is, is kind of an interesting thing. I mean, there can be lots of action, but uh, Ryer, there's there's a lot of a lot of problems in videoing waterfowl hunts. Yeah, I would say that <clears throat> it's probably not my favorite type of hunt to video. Uh, it, it presents a lot of challenges for me as a videographer, just given the nature of it. Um, so. I, I tend to get a little stressed and, and kind of feel like I'm running with a, like a chicken with my head cut off for, for most of the hunt. And, uh, Mark can tell you, everybody likes to always ask the, the camera guy, did you get any cool shots right after the hunt? And sometimes after a waterfowl hunt, I cannot definitively say whether or not I got epic shots. Um, luckily I, I generally end up with them, but it just kind of the feeling afterwards is, is a little hesitant. Yeah, well, you know, when we're hunting and we're sitting in a duck blind, it's how important it is to sit down and be covered and and not move and uh, not let the bird see you. Well, unfortunately, when you're trying to make a video, you've got to do pretty much the opposite. The camera's got to be out there. The lens has to be able to uh, to be on the bird, and it has to be able to move with the bird coming. And so just by definition, you've got that out there, um, just uh, drawing attention to yourself and your blind, not to mention the fact that 
you're trying to stay focused on a bird that is <clears throat> 200 yards away and then 100 yards away and then 50 yards away, then hopefully 20 yards away, and you're trying to stay in focus and you've got a light background and a dart subject, which can just lean to a, lead to a black blob out there. It's, uh, it's, it's problematic to say the least. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. You're, you really are fighting a lot of the controls when you're uh, when you're filming that, and I th I think it's a good exercise in, in getting familiar with your camera for sure. It, it's very good for that. I mean, when you do a few few hunts like that, you really get to know your camera's functions. If you're running it in manual, of course, which you should be, and uh, um, I won't go into a whole bunch on that front. Actually, uh, if you guys want to hear more about that, you guys should go check out uh, our friend Caleb Copeland's podcast, uh, the Redneck Tech Podcast, and he, he talks about running cameras in manual and a little bit of waterfowl. He kind of shares my sentiments on the whole waterfowl hunt. It's not his favorite thing to uh, film either, but, you know, we get out there and so, we do it and get some yeah, cool footage. This is Mark Groupie Outdoors, and we do everything outdoors, so... Wherever the community wants us, the community finds us, and sometimes that's in a duck blind. Hopefully, a lot of times that's in a duck blind. But uh, and then uh, let's see what do we got. Oh, we got in news. We've got uh, YouTube's uh, uh, changing policy in firearms. Uh, Ryer, you want to uh, bump people up to date on on what they're doing to uh, to things? Yeah. So it's probably not a surprise to anybody who uh, listens to us that YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, and uh, places like that are making it increasingly harder for uh, us to display and get our content out to you guys. Um, definitely, they, they don't look highly upon hunting and firearms and all that sort of stuff. And they just came out the other day with new policies on, uh, and this is YouTube specifically, uh, on content featuring firearms. And uh, they're prohibiting things such as uh, videos that are intended to sell firearms or firearm accessories. They got a whole list of accessories that they don't approve for because they look scary pretty much. Uh, they are banning videos that provide instructions on manufacturing firearms, ammunition, uh, magazines, any sort of accessories and that sort of thing. Uh, you can go, I'll put a link in, in the description and you can see exactly uh, what they're talking about here. But I think it all just comes down to it. It's uh, not always a friendly place on the online environment for people creating content like ours. And it's it's uh, certainly not looking any better, not getting any better. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, it's, uh, it's um, well, you know, one of, one of those things that, and as we lose, you know, you, YouTube's a private private company what are they owned by who google now google now so youtube's owned but it's a private company they can do what they want but as we you know lose these privileges uh or these rights uh they, they, don't, they don't come back to us and i i think just one of the important things to consider is 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 the people that are against us really don't have any plan on stopping it. You know, if they could just get rid of ARs, you know, this would all be over. But it certainly is going to always be on to the next thing. And ultimately, their their goal is to completely disarm us. So I don't think anyone should be disillusioned about that it's anything other than that. As, as much as I don't like extremism, uh, I, I, do, I, do, I do feel that... Uh, um, uh, that we have to pretty much fight to be extremely one way because the other side is fighting to be extremely the other way. And, uh, and it's not really not what, uh, you know, whether we need these firearms or not, it's not the bill of needs, it's a bill of rights. And, and, uh, and, and, and we have, we have, we have the right to keep these things. And, uh, we've had these things for a long time. We've had these, weapons for years and years and years and just now people have become more deranged to start using these things in in worse and worse ways and as far as youtube what they want to show it's amazing what they will show i mean they'll show beheadings and deaths and dismemberment and as many gory things as you could possibly want to find 
but they want to take away how to put on a bump stock or or, or whatever or how to modify this or that it seems um i don't know would you call it hypocritical it's, it's whatever well, I've, I've always thought and you like to think that youtube and facebook and instagram and all these places are communities meant for discussion and connection and for uh kind of the sharing of ideas and like you said, Mark, they're all private entities, so they can do what they want. And I'm not going to sit here and say that they can't because that would be hypocritical of me. But you'd like to see that they would uphold some sort of ideal of, of free speech and the free uh, sharing of ideas and definitely taking away the ability of a channel to monetize their videos or... Uh, making them harder to see or taking them down entirely because of maybe content that a select group of people deems unfavorable uh, is is kind of sad to see and and uh, I don't know you can't really do much about it they're a free they're a free entity but it, it it's disconcerting to me and, and definitely reflects kind of the state of of politics and where we're at as a as a society right now where we can't seem to discuss anything and we'd rather just go take all our toys and play in our own corner and, and forget about everybody else. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of toys and going out and playing, we're going to cut to our guest today. Today, our guest, uh, we have Francisco Pina and he is, uh, uh, he's a, uh, I don't know if you call him an, uh, an upper comer on social social media and in the outdoors and everything, but uh, let's go to our man Francisco Pena. Francisco, how are you doing today? Hey, what's going on, Mark? Oh, we're doing pretty well here. And uh, you getting some uh, weather down your way? Oh yeah, right now you know it's really coming down and raining. You know it's kind of making it a little hard for some fishing, but uh, you know we'll make it work. Yeah. yeah. So you've got uh, your 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 social media pages uh, called the Rod Fathers. Could you could you tell us something about the Rod Fathers? Yeah. Um, so you know our team and our name and our logo is the Rod Fathers. Um, we're just a small group of guys, you know, that kind of got yeah. together um, through fishing, you know, meeting each other on the banks or through social media. And, you know, we started fishing together, and we decided to come up with a name for ourselves, you know, kind of get some a brand on it, as you say. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we came up with the Rod Fathers. It's kind of cool, catchy, little spinoff. And um, everything really kind of started off as a joke. And we really didn't think that we were going to make it into something serious. And um, sure enough, you know, the last couple months, you know, we've got we've grown a lot. Um, we got a lot of followers on social media between um, Facebook, Instagram, um, as well as social media. Um, so, you know, it's really nice and it's really cool. Uh, but what we're really about is um, getting people on fish, teaching people something, you know, that they wouldn't know or maybe a spot that they wouldn't know. And, um, you know, that's a really big thing that we're trying to do here. All right. Well, that's great. Uh, just as a, a, a disclaimer here, uh, Francisco is multitasking today, and he's uh, he's taking yeah. care of his he's taking care of his young family at the same time that he's helping us out here and doing this. So, if you're wondering what uh, the background noise is, that's what we got there, and we uh, we really mostly thank Francisco for spending the time with us here today on his busy schedule. Um, so this really is just about the joy of fishing, isn't it? I mean, you guys. I mean, I've seen you guys. Uh, your, your your videos and your photos. You're here. You're there. I mean, it, it's not just lakes and rivers. I mean, you guys are in irrigation ditches and runoff spots and everything, aren't you? Yeah. Um, you know, it's like one of the things that I say a lot is um, you kind of go where the fish are. You know, like, uh, I just came back from Washington, you know, um, and this last weekend um, we were in um, an irrigation canal fishing for carp. So, you know, we're really, we're kind of like the jack of all trades, master of none. That is kind of like the best way to explain us. 
Yeah, um, you, you you just made a, vi a video, too, of how to make your own uh, uh, carp bait, which is pretty effective, and, and we'll have links to you so people, uh, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, information and stuff that you provide to the to the to the weekend fishermen now uh, what kind of what kind of videos all do you do you have uh, have up um you know the videos that we have up are um mostly been just us fishing and kind of our adventures mm -hmm. and you know kind of the stuff that you know like these big shows and these big youtubes really don't show is kind of like the nitty-gritty and you know us falling us making mistakes you know us goofing off and just recently I got into doing, you know, the how-to, you know, like you said, with the carp bait. Because, you know, there's so much stuff that, you know, guys like us have been fishing for years. I mean, between the the five or six of us, there's about 60, 70 years of fishing experience. Mm -hmm. So what we take for granted, you know, not a lot of people know. So that's why we're starting to get into this kind of, hey, this is how you do this. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what you look for. You know, again, for the weekend warriors. Yeah. You know, not not everyone's got that time to spend like what we do on the water where, you know, one of at least one of us on our team is out on the water every single day. Wow. Well, um, where where does your passion from fishing come from? I mean, obviously, you, you know, you're a, you're a young man, baby. You're hitting the water whenever you can. Did, did, did your family do it or... Uh, a, f a friend do it or, 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 or where did this love uh, for, f for fishing come from? Well, actually, it actually started with my dad. Um, you know, I've been fishing since I was uh, three weeks old. They took me right out of the hospital and onto the water. Um, did they, know, did dad, they use you as dad, bait? Yeah, pretty much. Throw me out there on a little bobber, flop <laughs> around, and next thing you know, big fish would come up. <laughs> but, um, you know, my dad used to work nights a lot. So the only time that he would really have time off was on the weekends. So we would go every single weekend, you know, since I could remember. And um, since then, you know, just kind of put the, the fuel to the fire. And, um, you know, now we're starting to get into something more serious. And we're going to start making something to where, you know, the average dad or the average Joe is able to take his kid out on the water and have some information in his back pocket to where, you know, his kid can be like, oh, my God, my dad's, you know, awesome. Look at this big fish that he caught. Oh, he knows all this information. So that's why we want to be that kind of vessel to that. Yeah, you know, I think that's 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 important because especially as we get older and time is more of a premium to us and we get busy and stuff like that and we, we want it to be about the – the big epic trips we we forget about all the things that I mean, we did when we were we were younger that were so much fun i i can remember we lived on a residential lake and sometimes my fishing rod didn't even work and i would just tie a <laughs> i would tie a, a a line to the end of uh half my rod uh, and and uh and put a a mep spinner or something and just drag it along the bulkhead hoping that a fish would come out and get it i mean we you know there was a time in our life where we do anything for a fish and we got to keep remembering that uh as we bring our our young families along on this and friends oh yeah definitely yeah you know and that's that's kind of like the untold story about fishing you know some of it's just jerry stuff that worked that one day and next thing you know it's it's the new fad it's the new thing yeah what what uh you yourself what what kind of what kind of fish do you uh uh all like to chase yourself what's your what's your what's your uh what tickles me, your fancy me personally um if i had a fish that i had to pick for the rest of my life um I'd really think it would be uh, the white sturgeon. Really? Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's kind of an elusive fish. It, you know, the odds on it are some odd. It, it's it's ridiculous. I think it's easier to hit the lotto. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of people that go out there for years and um, even decades and not catch a white sturgeon. And, 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 you know, being able to go out there and target them and be able to land one of those monsters, I mean, it's just – it's so rewarding. And where are, you, where are you fishing for those right now? Right now, uh, we are fishing in Rio Vista, California. Okay. Right. Um, just right there, right off of um, the boat launch. And we'll go up towards the power lines about, I want to say, a mile south. 
on the um, Sacramento Deep Water Channel. And they're in right now, Mark. They are pushing. Are they? We are seeing a lot of numbers on the water. We're seeing a lot of numbers also on our page through, you know, um, our social media. Um, I'm constantly getting pictures sent to me and info and tips. And, you know, we're just all relaying that. But, you know, with this big rain that we just had and that we are continuing to have, these fish are hungry and they're eating. And they like that muddy water. I mean, a lot of times we don't like to fish in muddy water, but they like it when it's uh, a bit turbid, right? Oh, yeah. That that nice, brackish, muddy water is perfect. Because um, what it happens is, you know, all the water flow that we're having right now is kicking up all the worms, the clams, and everything. Mm. So all their food is up in the open. They don't have to work for it. Uh-huh. So everything in sight. I mean, it's, it's, it's open game right now. So other than other than and fishing, uh, what about the other outdoor uh, outdoor pursuits? Are you are you a hunter also? Yes, I'm a hunter, but I'm not a successful hunter. <laughs> you know, I wish I wish I could say I'm a hunter. Um, you know, but uh, I do a lot better at fishing, so that's why I've been sticking to fishing these last couple of years. But I have been trying to get out to go do some hunting, but you know, between having a young family. No. And starting up this new, this new adventure in my life, I haven't really had much time to do it. Well, w- one of the things uh, tricky, tricky about hunting, um, you know, a- access and, and a quality spots are <laughs> seem to be, you know, y- of course you have to be a good hunter and, and everything, but access and, and you know to a, to a quality spot is 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 really paramount to be you know consistently a successful hunter and without the time of developing that on 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 public grounds or owning you know having access to private ranches i mean we when we're 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 blessed to have um access to some uh, private ranches and that you know that can immediately make you more successful to where you know someone who's just as good or better than you is is gonna is gonna is gonna struggle being successful but um uh so 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 hunting you know or a quality duck club you know versus beating your head against a wall in a in a refuge which doesn't mean that there's not great uh great fishing on a refuge or great uh great deer hunting up in the national forest but uh the learning curve is so steep and uh, the work you have to put in is, is, is so hard that it's really prohibitive for a lot of people. But, but fishing, I think, uh, especially here in California, gives the average person a, a lot more access to, to quality opportunities. Do you think that's true? Yeah, you know, um, I, I agree with you 100% because, you know, it, it's everyone's going to go draw towards the easier things in life right i mean it's just a proven fact so you know fishing is hard and it does have different levels of difficulty but your average joe can pick up a fishing pole at walmart for 15 dollars go out to a local river and stream and at least see a fish or two Mm -hmm. you know unlike me where you know i can spend a couple thousand dollars in hunting gear and um you know i'll see a deer maybe once every five years out on public <laughs> land <laughs> yeah it seems to be I'll that see way him, i'll see him during off season yeah but i won't see him during season oh no <laughs> well that that goes against everything i mean you, you it's it's just a proven fact that <clears throat> if you run around and uh you're not hunting for them you're gonna see them everywhere but as soon as you start hunting for them they magically disappear oh yeah oh they know too I'm convinced that they know. <laughs> yeah. Well, where where, where do you uh, where do you hope to go with your 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 venture here, the the Rod Fathers? What 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 where where do you hope to be able to take that? Um, you know, our big plans are really is to do a lot of community service and a lot of work. You know, giving back to people and helping the average Joe out. Um, you know, yeah. Tons of followers, tons of views, tons of likes is great and all. But as long as I can help one family, that's all that really matters. And that's all we really want to do. You know, we just want to help the average family get on fish. And it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be small. But as long as we can go out and help somebody and, you know, 
create the passion, you know, because who knows? We can have the next, you know, Bassmasters kid on our page and we could help his dad get him on some fish mm-hmm. and it could start the fire. You know, that's all we really want. Yeah. Um, well, if, if people, people want to, uh, find you, where, where are all the different, where are all the different places that people can find you? So we're on uh, Facebook as, uh, the rod fathers, as well as Instagram with, uh, Francisco Pina. Um, I post a lot of my rod father pages on there and, um, that's really it currently. Um, I have, I'm not, I'm, I may be a millennial, but I'm not fancy enough for Twitter or Snapchat yet. <laughs> I do. I do like the Tinder idea. I would swipe <laughs> right on you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Uh, who knows? Uh, well, I, I don't, I guess I don't even want to go there, but, uh, <laughs> I don't think you do, Mark. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I think that's a whole. That's a whole segment of millennialism that you probably couldn't even swallow. No, you, you, <laughs> you can't even do the hashtags. I mean, he he gets angry at me when uh, when we post things on Instagram. I do all the hashtags, and he. I think I think he just can't even look at it. It 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 almost makes him makes him want to puke when he sees that many hashtags. So, yeah. hashtag look at me. Hashtag I'm a star. Well, Hash, but we yeah, have, haven't but quite we, figured out the but, hashtag but, but, yet. But, yeah, <laughs> but but uh, but I I I, I, I understand you got to, got to do it. It yeah. is a necessary evil, and uh, if you're if you're going to be in this business, uh, obviously you're in the business to to get people to peek at, peek at you. So we got to do it. Uh, do do what it takes to get people to uh, slowly take a peek at us. So uh, you know, just like you, we got to got to do what it what whatever it. Yeah, you know, we can we can not do it and really, really, really keep it all to ourselves, but uh, that doesn't move the ball forward. So we're trying to reach as many people as possible, and and that's our new thing with our deal. The 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 community is we're trying to reach and touch uh, as many people as possible, sim- similar to you, and and provide people some opportunities and ideas that they wouldn't otherwise have. So we thank you very much for 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 what you're doing. Uh, you're a regular blue collar guy, and you're getting out there and trying to help every other regular blue collar guy. Yeah, thanks, Mark, and thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it very much. You know, it means a lot when uh, you know different groups and you know that have the same goal can get together and really appreciate each other and uh, you know promote each other. So I appreciate you guys and you know what you guys are doing over there. All right. I well, just wish that I could show some pictures of hunting. To be on your guys' level. <laughs> well, we'll 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 get that. I want to I want to do a crow hunt here pretty soon. So maybe we'll get you out here for a for a crow, for a crow hunt. That'd be a good uh, good off season sort of thing. I think we have a little bit more time where we can. Uh, oh yeah, do man. That. We'll we'll go get some crows and we'll do a little bit of fishing. All right, that sounds good. Uh, what uh, we're as we're talking right now, this is the middle of march uh what's what's going to be coming up hot for people if people want to get out there on the water uh what species should they be looking for right now well mark right now is all pre-spawn for bass um you know large mouth small mouth and spotted so right now the fish um mostly the females are just eating as much as they can before they kind of go dormant and they're feeding and they come up into their beds and they start spawning so right now is a really hot bite. I recommend uh, swim baits and spinner baits, um, even buzz baits. Right now, it's, it's a pretty good bite. Um, you know, as the water temperature starts to rise up a little bit more, you know, they'll start coming into their beds, and then at that time, you know, you really want um, like jigs and swim baits. You know, something just to really, really upset them, kind of to imitate a fish coming into their bed to eat their uh, their spawn. So the bite is just going to be phenomenal here for bass pretty soon. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be sure to have our bass radar up, and and we're hoping to, we're hoping to get out there and and get some do some bass video here too. So we will combine our our talents uh, here in the near future, and whether it's crows or largemouth or 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 trout or whatever it is, we'll uh, hopefully we can get on something together. Yeah. Right on, Mark. That sounds great. 
All right, everybody, that's Francisco Pena of the Rod Fathers, and you can, uh, we'll have links to him, and you'll be able to find him and, and hunt him down and check out what he's got and what he's all about. And uh, we really appreciated having him on today. So thank you very much. Well, Ryer, what else do we got? Anything, uh, anything, uh, anything else to uh, bring up there? Uh, I don't Just, think so. I think we touched all the bases that we wanted to touch. So uh, wanting to, to kick us out of here, why don't you remind people one more time where they can find us and refind us now? Well, if you want to find this podcast, we are on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud. We also put uh, audio links on YouTube. Um, you can find this podcast at the Mark Rupee Outdoors Podcast on uh, whatever platform your favorite podcasts are sold or given away because you guys aren't buying this unless you want to. If you want, if you want to buy this podcast, we'll take your money. We, we will sell it to you. We'll you take can, your money. You can get it for free, or you can buy it to us for a hundred dollars per episode download. Why not two hundred? Two two hundred's better yet. Or three or five. What? Any, help us help us support our bad habits. Maybe they. Yeah, a thousand. I think it's worth a thousand. It's it's for the churlins. It's all for the churlins. Help the churlins. Maybe we should put together one of those ASPCA videos for yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Um, so other than donating copious amounts of money to us, you can uh, you can also find uh, our other social media avenues to get a hold of us uh, at The Community Show, uh, which is our new web series that if you haven't checked out, you should. And uh, that's on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Uh, also at a dot TV to the end of that. That's our website. And uh, also on Hunter Vids, uh, which <clears throat> just coming back around, I forgot to say this earlier, but coming back around to the YouTube and Facebook of the world's making it kind of hard for uh, uh, hunting and fishing and outdoors content creators to get their stuff out there. Uh, you know, there are websites that are dedicated to hunting, fishing, the outdoors and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, Keep make looking sure, those up. Yeah, make sure to go support those kind of websites and, and really make it worth their while to stay up and and keep showing the content that, that you want to see because it's never a guarantee that it's going to be on any of the other social media sites. So, you know, go check that out. We're on uh, huntervids.com. So, you know, go look us up there and look at the other videos and give us your money for these episodes, I think, is really the moral of the story. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Well, we've got, uh, it is uh, the middle of March, so in about uh, 10 days, we've got uh, opening turkey season coming up. So we've got some great leads on that. So we're hoping to bring you some great turkey adventures this year. And the hogs are showing up in good numbers this year. So we're hoping to have some great hog hunts for you. So You know, I found a song on one of the, on one of the, uh... <sighs> go ahead. Well, it. It's kind of a cool anecdote. I found a song on our royalty-free music pages. Stop it. That's such an annoying sound in the microphone. Our, our, I know everybody hates it as much as I do. It's called Pass the Pork. Pass the Pork. It's called Pass the Pork. I've, I've heard Feed the Pig. Feed the Pig. It, <laughs> that's an AM radio commercial. Oh, okay. Okay, tell us Pass the Pork. That's all. That's the story. That's it. That's it. You... Wasted 30 seconds of our life for that. We're already 33 minutes and 22 seconds and counting into this. So Into people's lives already. So yeah, I'm just going to we'll keep seconds. rambling. Why don't, <laughs> we, I get to, we could go through the music selections, all that sort of stuff. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 spare, we'll spare ourselves and you guys all from that. But uh, anyways, we thank you all for listening for another episode of Mark Groupie Outdoors the podcast and we got some big adventures coming up so we hope to see you in the near future and talk to you next time